Unity Grids can make your game development so much easier, especially for level design for 2D or 3D games. First, proper setup or the grid might not work right. So turn on the grid with the grid toggle button and use the arrow drop down for more options. Now grid snapping is disabled because we have to be in global mode and we cannot use the rec transform. Instead, use the move tool and then we can get rocking. The first key is setting the proper grid size can't tell you how this has messed it up for me when I didn't set the right grid size, but you really want to get that dialed in to fit properly. In the grid settings, you'll see grid size. Now the first thing is, is I can make this say one or two, and we can set the grid size with that the next part is what if it's not exactly a perfect square you can turn the linking off and let's say i want to do a one by eight and eight depending on if this is a 3d game now my grid is completely different so really versatile and great depending on your artwork and your game but uh, that has come in handy for me so many times so i could simply set this back and keep the linking on a quick pro tip with setting the grid size you can use the shortcuts control and the bracket keys to make it bigger or smaller and if you just want to see what that is you can come into the numbers and see what it's set to and it's basically gonna each increment is gonna take it in half from what it was so it went from 8 to 4 to 2 to 1 to 0.5 if you're on a Mac that's going to be command in the bracket keys. On Unity 6, you can also do the push to grid, align selection to grid using the control uh, forward slash. And you can toggle the snapping with the forward slash as well, which leads us into the second key, increment snapping. Now, in order to actually use the increment snapping, one of the things that's commonly misunderstood is this is actually when you're not using snapping, right? The increment snapping is in use with the shortcut key. So if I do one and I hold down control on a Mac, it's going to be command, but for a PC control, it will snap the center or the pivot point one grid square over now that's if our actual grid which we would go in here is the grid size is set to a one by one so you can see it's each one is a one by one square so our grid increment snapping if i set this up to say two it's going to skip this one so to make this easier i can put it over here if i hold down control right it won't it won't do this here because it skips one and goes to two. So it's, and I can, I can even drag both gizmos and drag it across and it's just going to skip two everywhere. I would want this as a one. The one by one works great for me for putting this here versus if I did this one here, this is going to have to be 0.5. So that way I can move this up properly so I could duplicate this and snap it where I want to. So that gives me some leverage to kind of move these around. And that's super helpful in how I started building out my level. And for my last extra pro tip, sometimes the color of the grid can be an issue or a distraction depending on the colors in your game. So if I wanted to change the color of the grid, really easy, we just go up to Edit Preferences. That's edit preferences. And then we'll go to the colors category, find grid. And here we can click the colored box and we could change that color, red, green, or a yellow, whatever works for your specific game, depending on your color themes that makes it visible and easy. For right now, I'm gonna change it back to the default, which is the gray color that's 80, 80, 80. And I hope these tips and tricks helped you use the grid system more effectively. Let me know how you've used the grid system in your game project.